After a 7-3 Toronto Maple Leafs win over the Rangers on Garden Ice, a night that where we probably thought would be a good opportunity for Igor Shesterkin to feel the same way that the rest of the team did a couple days ago, but that was certainly a different script from Toronto. Well, what I see is probably the worst loss of the year, and the reason why I say that is because of the opportunity. This game was on a tee for the Rangers. You've got Jones and Nett, who's the third string, who has only stopped 87% of the shots he's faced in the American League, and we're almost at Christmas, and he's only played five games, so it's not like he's warm from playing a lot in the minors. A decimated decor, half the team has the flu, Am I missing anything, boys? Seriously. <laughs> Should we have well, blindfolds on them, too? You weren't missing Marner and Matthews, who combined to well, about six points. So that's right? what it was. Yeah. To me, it was four guys mm -hmm. beat 18 of our guys. That's the way I look at it. It's just it's a bad loss. Mm -hmm. Well, when you face a team like Toronto with this skill, and we talked about this, this skill they have up front, you need to be ready to defend. And in the first period, they were just not ready to defend. It was a lot of sloppy plays in their own end. A lot of rebounds, they were getting first to pucks, and that urgency needs to be there, even more so when you play against some of the best players offensively in this game. So they were just not ready for it. And then second period, much better. But when you put yourself in a hole like that, it's going to be extre extremely hard to come back. Yeah. The one thing, though, fellas, the trend that we've seen over the last two years with the core is they... Don't play well when the expectations are high, meaning they were expected to win this game. All of the cards were in their favor. Why doesn't this group push through when they're supposed to win? They played awesome Sunday against LA. Awesome. Great defensive game. Masterfully played the game. And, and then you come out and do that. I don't get it. That's what I don't see. And I don't know what the deal is with the expectations. Well, I think it's also a little bit to the style of how Toronto plays. You know, it's, it's easy to kind of go along with how they like to play the game, which is a little more high risk reward type of hockey. And they move the puck a lot east to west instead of really minimize your mistakes. I mean, that's been one of the issues for Toronto. Yes, they can score, but they also make a lot of mistakes. And sometimes when you play a team like that, you tend to <laughs> copy that in a way. In the first period, I mean, they, they got outmatched. All right, we told you about the Garden of Dreams Foundation. We told you that we're at $70,000 so far throughout the course of the night. We also showed you the autographed sticks that you can potentially win with a $100 donation at msgnetworks.com. We're going to show you exactly how authentic those signed sticks are because we have two right here, and we have two goaltenders right here who have come prepared with Sharpies Hank. to make sure oh, that it's go, legit. Buddy. Thank you, Steve. I've added, Stephen. I know my role. <laughs> <laughs> Again, msgnetworks.com. Please log on. Please make your donation. This Henrik Lundqvist autographed goalie stick, the Steve Valiquette autographed goalie stick, will also be part of the group of prizes that make you eligible to win with a $100 donation. Guys, we've talked all night about the importance. There we go. Love it. The importance of the Garden of Dreams Foundation and where we're at right now, $70,000 for an organization that has seen nearly $75 million yeah. awarded throughout the tri-state in the last almost two decades. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Uh, and again, we talked about this during the game as well. Just the opportunity this organization is giving so many kids in the area. And, and uh, as a former player, uh, I appreciate it, and, and also the current players to have that opportunity to, you know, uh, have great experiences at the Garden, Radio City Hall, and, and, and Training Center. And, and it's just so much joy when you have those opportunities. Hank, in the second intermission, you went up and saw one of the young fans up there. And, and the first thing you said was um, the joy it brings the parents because they want to have great days too. And it's about the kids. The parents are also the beneficiaries of the experience, and Henrik was spoiled. He never played in the minor leagues like I did. I had to grind. <laughs> and when I did play in the minor leagues, this is where the Rangers were great. They had us in Hartford start going to hospitals, being in this experience, knowing that at some point we would hopefully be Rangers and be comfortable enough to enter the room, because sometimes, guys, it's hard to get into the room when you're a young player, but I felt like the Rangers just did the right thing by getting the players comfortable young, being able to go into the room, see the parents, converse with them. They have a great day as well. And then you get up to New York and um, you're comfortable doing it. And I thought that's why it was always a good thing about the organization being able to set us up that way. Yeah, and Henrik, we saw during the second period when you – uh, helped to award through your foundation, the Henrik Lundqvist Foundation, in correlation with the Garden of Dreams. 
awarding that young lady the opportunity to get around just a little bit easier. The smile on her face when you came, walk, when you came walking out speaks volumes for what yeah. the Garden of Dreams does. It's incredible. And, and Elon, the, the mm -hmm. young man uh, who's been part of my foundation, the Young Ambassador Program, this was his project. I'm, I'm so proud of him and, and the, the impact he's had on so many people through his work. I hope it inspires other young people to do the same. Uh, but it was great to, to be there with Emma and, and her father. And, and I saw tears in his eyes and he just looked at me and I'm just so happy to see her happy. And that, you know, mm. I made the night. Yeah. Sure it does. really did. Yeah. And those are the kind of people that are helped by the Garden of Dreams Foundation. So please, $100 donation at msgnetworks.com or scan the QR code on your screen, and that makes you eligible to win one of these great prizes. Let's hear from Mika Zibanejad in the dressing room after the 7-4 loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So just to start things off, just where did it feel like things went wrong for you guys tonight? I think pretty obvious that the start wasn't good enough. And, and uh, um, we're down 4-1. It's... it's uh, um, that's not a situation that you want to put yourself in, and, and um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's just not good enough in the first period. You were able to regain some momentum heading into the third. Did that goal right to start the third just de deflate you guys a little bit? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think you know you, you try to stay positive, you try to you know keep pushing, but but obviously when um, I thought our second was better, um, and, and uh, you know we get a couple of goals and make it a little bit closer. And, um, and, and they start off with, with uh, getting that goal. It's it's uh, um, puts us back a little bit again. But but uh, yeah, no, it was uh, um, the first period really really um, um, you know put us in a bad spot for the rest of the game. Disappointing for you after having such a strong performance against LA to then to do this tonight. Yeah, um, obviously you want to keep going. You want to keep rolling and, and um, take you know. Things that we did well from from LA and continue, but but um, yeah, not not with a start like that. Um, even though we scored in the second and, and we battled back, and, and you know I thought we have some chances in the third as well, but you know we um, even especially against a team like this, you can't just give up those opportunities and those goals in, in, a, in a period like that and, and start off the game. So um, yeah, that's that's not good enough. And, and um, get a couple of days here to, to regroup and, and get back at it. Yeah, clearly the focus for the Rangers after this one is how the game started. Those first 20 minutes, you consider the Toronto Maple Leafs scored four goals, the first two a minute 15 apart, the second two 21 seconds apart. Mm -hmm. That's going to set you back, and you usually don't recover no matter who the opponent is from a first period. Length. Well, yeah, because the first goal of the game against is within the first five minutes of the game. And this was the theme prior to the LA Kings game on Sunday, where the Rangers went four previous games, allowing the first goal of the game. And you can't do it against a highly skilled team because, as Henrik said, you want to open it up and then you want to play back and forth hockey with them. Well, they have four very unique talents up front that can finish and are very opportunistic. And I felt like when the hands come up here for Shesterkin, it's it's not a good look for him. I don't like to see him do that. And I felt like he just wasn't on his game again, guys. He was getting in his own head. And then it got away from him as well as it got away from his teammates. He had some difficult saves to make, but at 4-1 after the first period, you need to help each other there. And uh, it seemed to feed itself a little bit. There was some bad body language there, and it, it just wasn't a good look for me. Yeah, and much like the, the Rangers, how good they can be offensively, Toronto, they're the same way. The way they pass the puck, and I thought about the, that when I saw them on the power play in the first period, the way they moved the puck reminded me of the Rangers' power play, which means they're, they're one of the most skilled groups up front, and again, when you face that, the attention to details are so important. They're so important in how you read every situation, when to step up, and the, there was too many opportunities in the first period where the reads were a little off, and, and um, the intensity to me wasn't really there. That's uh, 15 goals against in the last three starts for Igor Shosturkin. Third straight loss for the first time for him in more than two years.